Most of the research that we do in social science, particularly on attitudes, ideology, our politics, have always been based on social learning. So we got it from our parents, or there's some event uh, in our lives that made us uh, move to the left or to the right or pick a particular issue. The book's really about taking uh, a, that, a step back and actually looking at being a human and that we actually come into this world with lots of information uh, in our genes, in our neurological patterns, in our physiology, and that those are influencing how we view our political world and make our political choices. People on the left and the right are more genetically related. So those on the left are more genetically related, those on the right are more genetically related in a loose sense. Um, probably the, the best way to put it would be that um, you come into this world prepared to learn certain amounts of information or be socialized in a certain way. And that was like a, a pretty big finding in that um, it's not that you're born a liberal or born a conservative, that's not the issue. It's that you come into this world with a certain set of genetic information and then whatever experiences you have, um, you're more likely to select into those environments and experience things in a certain way in which you would view the world in a certain way. Spouses are um, ideologically related, that they're actually more similar. We select more similar mates ideologically than anything else except religion. That's kind of remarkable. Not height, not weight, not body type. Personality is meaningless. But the correlation between spouses for ideology is about 0.7. Staggeringly high. And it's not uh, convergence. It's not two people meet and then, then they become more agreeable. It's they actually come into that meeting more similar ideologically than any other trait. If we truly are different and we see the world differently, it's not that more information will make us more likely to agree. It's not like only if they would understand me, um, only if they listen, only if they knew better. It's not it at all. It's actually people are biologically different and they see and interpret the same stimuli differently. And that's, the, if that's one thing to take away from the book is that we are different and we see the world and interpret it differently. And no amount of information is going to force someone to change their opinion if they actually interpret the stimulus differently. When someone is threatened, um, uh, their you know, psychological architecture is threatened by the way, the way they view the world, it comes out in heated political debate. Um, so I think the, the one thing that we could apply this kind of research to is instead of trying to force the other side to listen to us or believe us, is to accept they actually see it differently and that's okay and then try to find a common ground instead of trying to force them to your opinion. Um, it's trying to tell someone to be a different person. And you can't do that. Um, you know, you, it's, it's, I mean, imagine like two people going to a restaurant to eat, and one person just hates the taste of meat, and the other person hates the taste of vegetables. No amount of, of yelling between them is going to get one to agree to eat meat and the other vegetables. So they need to find a restaurant where they both serve meat and vegetables. Um, and that's really what the, you know, the, the left and the right need to do, is instead of trying to force each other's uh, hand and opinion, is actually just find some common ground.